Thank you for staying with us. It's uh, sports tonight, and uh, uh, before we go on to the next part of the show, let me just quickly take you to the Anfield and update you with um, the live game that's currently going on. We're close to 59 minutes of football now at the Anfield. It's Liverpool 0, Manchester United 0. Um, still um, grinding out a goalless draw in that one. Once there's a change around that scoreline, you can trust us to update you so you can enjoy the best of two worlds. You can keep track of what's happening in the uh, English Premier League live game and, of course, keep track of uh, happenings on the domestic scene as well. Guys, let's run very quickly and take a look at some issues. Um, um, when you let, let's start with table tennis. Um, during the Olympic Games, the story was Aruna Quadri, Aruna Quadri, and what he was able to achieve. And we felt that we were going to be able to build on that momentum going forward to make sure that um, we market these sports and um, make it sustainable get it close to football in some ways. But the story is not, is not very pleasant. There's the IWTF African Senior Championship to be held in Morocco next year. And the organizers have warned that if you miss out of that, forget about the 2017 and the 2018 World Championships. Nigeria is in danger of missing out. Arnold Kodri is crying out to the sports ministry for support, for funding. And then... Um, how much, how, I mean, for how long, how, how long are we going to continue with this? Quite embarrassing to you. Um, I, I think it doesn't need to get to this stage. For a star player that should concentrate on um, a tournament that is almost, um, you know, around the corner, you know, trying to get funds, begging, appealing, almost going on uh, bended knees, you know, to get funds from uh, this, this, the, the ministry. These things are statutory. We knew about this tournament very long ago. You know, why, why must it come to this level? You know, a lot of people cried that um, we should help Aaron Okodri after the Olympic Games. But the question is, is he going to get enough help? With what we are seeing, you don't need a soothsayer to tell you that um, this guy is going to be left in the lodge. Mm. And of late, guys, uh, we've had, I mean, good times in table tennis. We're gradually coming back to being Africa's best. Egypt bringing, our, bringing down our neck. This is an opportunity for us to go out there again and show that what happened at the Olympics was no fluke particularly with Aruna Quadri and with table tennis in Nigeria. But if we do not take the advantage, we are out of 2017 World Championship, we are out of 2018, the Egyptians are going to have, I mean, a role. And then we are back to square one, yeah. trying, to do catch, play, trying to play catch up. And you know, the, the Egyptians don't have uh, issues of um, funding. Mm -hmm. You know, they are well organized. It's, it's, it's a question of um, the players. How many players are, are they taking are to they the taking to the championship? It's not a question of uh, whether, they, whether they will attend the tournament or not. So the, the players already have maximum concentration. They have, you know, uh, quality coaching. The facilities are there. They are well motivated. So it's for the players to deliver. It's not a question of, um, 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 you know, motivation. But here, we have a player that is doing so well, you know, um, and we, we cannot rally around him. We cannot support him. Every time, you know, people, the officials, officials will be, you know, telling him to do the nation proud, to the nation proud. But what have we given him? Mm. You know, it, it shouldn't come to a level where Harun Okwadri, one of the best tennis players in the world, Will be begging, you know, will be begging, you know, Africa's be, number one, Africa's number one, begging uh, be the giant of Africa to send him to a tournament that is statutory. That we 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 already knew about this tournament long, long time ago. So for me, I, I think it's sad. I don't know how Harold Okwadri is going to muster enough courage psychologically, um, if at all he's going to get the financial support to attend this tournament. Mm. When you are going for a tournament, you already demoralized. You are already defeated before. You are already spent. You are spent begging for support, begging for support. and funding. You know, so I, I think it's not the best way to mm. him. Uh, I, I remember your quotes. I remember your quotes, um, uh, only, um, just before the Olympic Games. I remember what you said. Uh, he generated he, mixed he, reaction. He, he, he generated a lot of mixed reaction. You remember what Oye said that time? Um, he said, "Do for the country what the country has done for you." <laughs> I still remember that quote. But that should not apply now for our country. We just once again want to appeal to people. Um, and the ministry, how, the first how, ministry. How would it not apply? Is the, is Harun Okodri yeah. going to you know sponsor himself to to, to the tournament? Yeah, he's done it before. Uh, so he should continue. No, no, I'm, not, I'm, not saying, continue. I'm not saying he should continue to do it, but yeah. but I'm just appealing now yeah. to the sports ministry. This is the time for them to show that they've got the back of our athletes. Try and get the funding. Let us go for this championship so that we don't miss out of the 2017 World Championship, of the 2018 World Championship, so that we can continue to stay up there 
um, in world ranking, table tennis, amongst the best, of course, as number one in Africa. Let's come, uh, still talking about um, ranking now, talking about awards, uh, talking about Africa. Um, over the weekend, the organizers, um, the Competition of African Football, released the list of nominees for the 2016 um, Glow Cup Awards. Uh, of course, the most prestigious category um, in the awards is the, the um, African Footballer um, of the Year. There's one for those based in Africa, where we have Umfa Wudo and Chisom Chikatara. Chikatara, representing Nigeria. But the main one um, is the one for the African Footballer of the Year. Uh, but then, uh, Toby, yep. John Mikel Lobi, captain of the Super Eagles, yep. uh, Ahmed Musa, um, and Kilichi Hianacho are the three Nigerians in the shortlist of 30. I don't know what you feel about the chances of uh, any of these guys making it to the final shortlist of three before the awards. Uh, but then, what are the chances? How yeah. good is it that yeah. we have these three guys in the shortlist? Yeah, really good. They are really exciting to see um, the jump players in there. I think um, a couple of years back, you know, Mika was very close. Uh, lost the award to, to Yaya Toure in Lagos. And then, I mean, I met Musa. I have, I have a good season with CSK Musa. Kelechi Yanacho, we know he's exploiting you know, with Man City. John Mikel will be at the Olympics and also mm. mixes it for him at Chelsea. But I mean, uh, in the in the calendar here, these three guys have done well for themselves. And I mean, if both for country and club, they deserve to be here. But their chances is very, very slim to him. When you have the likes of yeah, Mares, you know, who plays for Leicester City, EPL champions, you know, mm. uh, uh, player of the year, uh, Abu Mayang also for Gabon, who's done well for himself you know, in Jamlin. So it's always going to be difficult for these three guys, you know, uh, to, to, to have a good chance of winning. Maybe uh, to be part of the last five, I think they've got a good chance maybe to be part of the last five, especially for Kilichi Yanacho, who has been a great, you know, bright, bright star for, for, for African football. Uh, for John Mikel, maybe his performance also at the Olympics, and maybe, mm. but for Ahmed Musa, he hasn't had a good season with Leicester City for a couple of weeks. So it might really, you know, uh, really be a big, you know, um, uh, uh, for, him. for him. But, 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 yeah. but these guys have got, you know, uh, good chances. Oh, yeah, it's almost, it's, it's it's always an issue for us, you know, when, when we judge, when we try to make this shortlist uh, about what counts. Um, Riyad Mahrez was the player of the year in England, yep. uh, but he's had a very poor run uh, uh, this season yep. with Leicester City. They're really struggling. Um, Why Kalechi has been still in the headlines? Um, the same with uh, Musa, had a good season, but he's struggling right now. Uh, Mikel had a fantastic um, Olympic Games and has had a good time with the Super Eagles, but he's really not playing mm. um, at, at Chelsea. So all of these things makes it very difficult for you to make the call. Yeah, uh, you have to look at it on the, on the, you have to balance it with the national team appearances, the club appearances. Like you said, Mares did so well with Leicester last season. They won the EPL. He was Player of the Year. Um, Mikel Obi started the season last. The last season he didn't start well. Then the new coach came, he started having, you know, running, mm. um, started playing very well, had a decent, um, you know, campaign at the, at the Olympic Games. But um, I, I, I want to look at it realistically to him. I think um, this is a retrogression. If you, if you, if you, when you look at it, in the past two, three seasons, mm. I mean, the, the short list, the 30 man list, we used to have about six, five players mm. making that list. Now we have three. What does that uh, signify? It's a lot of setback. Uh, from 30, it's going to be reduced to 10, from 10 to 5. And then 5 to 10. You know, maybe Kelechi, like uh, Toby said, might make it to... Mm. Make this it is the, the first time that Kelechi is making. Yeah, 10 match he's shot He's won the young player award. Shot, but for, yeah. the, for the 5 or 3, I don't see... You don't see any of them making On the strength of what these three players have done, Mikel, Musa... Ah, well, there's, there's, a, there's a lot ahead. Yeah, but it's Kelechi Hanacho with uh, CNN Goal of the Week, yeah. back to back after yeah. the international yeah, yeah, but when maybe, December, but yeah, but when you look at it, so in, well, they will also look at. Um, yeah, okay, maybe, maybe they, will, they will look at the performance of last season for hmm. Mares winning the EPL. No, Mares yeah. ma 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 looks favourite. Yeah, but, but, but top three Kelechi Hanacho maybe could be, could be but, in. But, but, but really tough. Slight, uh, slight, really slight, tough. slight. Kelechi is making it for the first time. Yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. this is to prepare him for yeah, very, 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 the years very, ahead. Very, if he's able to keep he had the great season last. Yeah, and he's having a great season so far. 12, 12 goals in the APL. In the and he's having a great season so yeah, far. He has consolidated on that. But we just hope. I want more Nigerians mm. in the 30 man shot. Yeah, well, well, I mean, you can be sure. You can be sure that with the, with the new wave, I mean, the, yeah. the we'll be churning out these talents, um, the Iwobis of this world, mm. the Isaac Success. We'll begin to have a good number of these players in this, in this uh, short list, I'm sure, in the years ahead. Let's just hope that they keep the form. And they keep making impact with the national team. I'm sure the future is is um, is really bright. Let's let's go quickly um, to 
the beach now and talk about beach soccer. Remember, Nigeria is hosting the African Championship. Uh, the coach of the Super San Eagles, uh, Aldo Adamu Ejo, uh, has picked eight players from the just concluded Kada Beach Soccer Cup in Kaduna uh, for camp ahead of this year's CAF Beach Soccer Nations Cup in Lagos. Uh, the players were selected because they were outstanding for their different teams during the tournament. Uh, um, Aldo Adamu is confident that they will bring competition to his team and that they will blend with the team before the Continental Championship uh, later in the year. The players are Sunday Alasco. Um, Lukman Ibrahim, Nuruddin Mudashiru, Abdul Jalal Al Mustafa, Abubakar Isa, Abdurrahman Yunusa, uh, Royal Sin Olasini, and um, Nishi Foloshuso. Wow, these names are. I think it's good to have some new names. We used to have uh, the, you know, the, the Kimiri of this world. The, 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 those names Ali, have been coming from Benebu. Isaac Olawale. We have new names now to challenge these older ones. And I hope there's a blend because some of those old guys are still very, very relevant. But I hope that these new ones can also push and return us. We, we used to win this tournament before, yeah, but we've but been now, struggling of late. A lot of easter back for us in the, in the big soccer, but the motivation mm. we are hosting, um, you, you will be playing in front of your fans, in front of Nigerians. You, you, you will put up a disgraceful performance. I think yeah. Saka will come here. Even the Europa Copa Lagos that we used to win regularly, you know, so, uh, we stopped winning. We, we stopped winning. So, like, like the coach said, you know, uh, these guys will come in. They are, they are young. Uh, they've got plenty of energy. They will come in and have a blend. You know, uh, you know, make sure the likes of Issa Kawale sit well and all the pull great performance if they want to get into the team. So they should have a blend, and then uh, we should have a, a, a decent squad, you know, to compete in December. Mm. All right, let's go quickly to the women's game now. And uh, the Falconers, remember, uh, in a month from now, they will be having the uh, FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup in Papua New Guinea. Uh, coach of the team, Peter the Devil, uh, has invited two members of the Flamingos that didn't do too well. And um, is, he has called them up. That's Captain Rashida Ajibade and Central Defender Ketrin Kenneth. Uh, they've been called up to join the Falconers in Abuja. Um, the Devil says those girls were impressive. Um, although the team didn't do too well um, uh, in uh, the tournament in Jordan, it says they, are, they will impress him and uh, they will be good addition to his squad. And uh, by extension, we can also chip it in here that uh, Japan will be meeting North Korea um, in the final of the FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup in Jordan. Those two teams clearly are the best teams in this tournament. Japan are the defending champion, remember? And uh, they beat North Korea in the final the last time. So they are meeting again. Uh, this time around, all right? Let's listen to Peter the Devil. We'll be back with more on Sports Tonight. Towards our World Cup, we are playing friendly matches, trying to keep the team in shape for the World Cup. Not all of them are here. The own base, they are all here, but the problem I'm having is that every week since we resume, this clause, Bayesa, Delta, Rivers, all the female clubs, they will be requesting for their players. And I cannot hold on to them. But as from next week, I have sent message to all of them. As from next week, I am not going to release any player to any team. I have only two weeks to stay in camp. Well, that's uh, Peter Dedewo, coach of uh, the Falconets, uh, complaining about clubs not releasing the players. The Coaches of, this, of the men's team used to have this problem. The women are also having the same problem. But we want to wish him the best of luck. And we hope he's able to raise a team that will go uh, to Papua New Guinea and do Nigeria proud. Very quickly, before we go on a break, let's uh, take you to uh, bring you closer home now. Uh, talk about the Federation Cup, guys. Uh, second semifinal was played um, over the weekend in Ibadan. And um, we now have uh, the two teams that will be playing the final of the 2016 Nigeria Football Federation Cup semi final game uh, in Ibadan. Uh, over the weekend, uh, Nasarawa United beat Enyiba by a goal to nil. Yep. Um, to be you were there, you saw yep. the game. Yep. And of course, now we have the final match. Um, okay, let's start by showing you the result of the semi final match on your screen. Enyiba losing 0 1 to yep. Nasarawa United. Sure, sure, and okay. uh, uh, the final will now be fighting Enyiba against Nasarawa United. And it's going to be on Sunday, October 30. 30 is not right there on your screen. Uh, but then it's October 30, Sunday, uh, Teslim, Balogun Stadium. Probably we'll correct that and then uh, we'll bring it back up for you. But before I allow you guys to um, talk, let's just catch a quick break and then we'll be back with more on Sports Tonight. <laughs> 